Hello and welcome to the first of hopefully many videos here on Treasure Trove Gaming. My name's Adam and as you may guess from the title below, today I'm opening a box of Dual Masters Magic the Gathering. Before I get to this, first I would like to say a massive thank you to Harlequins Gaming in Preston for sorting me out with this box today. So if you fancy looking up some product for yourself from Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, from games like Warhammer 40,000 or it's board games, stuff like that, You'll find a link to our website and Facebook account down below. We'll give it a look. Help support an amazing local store and make yourself some great deals at the same time. Everyone knows at times like this, we really need to support somebody. So, with that out of the way, let's get down to business. So here we are. Box is ready. Are you? Good. Now, before we even get into the box, just look at that artwork on the front. Just a taste of what we're going to see inside once we start cracking some packs. Which, speaking of, let's get going. So, the packaging itself, as you'd expect from any product, the lovely Wizards branding all over it. Which, to be honest, I was quite surprised about. After watching videos of the VIP boosters that didn't have the Wizards branding on, I thought I'd just given up the ghost on that one. But... Here we go. Moment of truth. Oof, look at that. Hidden among the boosters there, we've got a box topper. So we're going to save this bad boy till later. See what we get out of that. But there are, I believe, 24 boosters in a box. And already I'm seeing the Brea art in the front of the Worm Coil Engine, Dark Confidant. We've got some amazing cards to look forward to in this one. So, let's start cracking. So, to be honest, I'm not too sure what to expect in the boxes. I don't really look into it that much, but here we go. So, so far, nothing amazing, as you'd expect. Brainstorm. Oryx salvages, not too bad. Just uh, put these over here. Then we've got our uncommons. And straight away, first row of the pack, we have a Dark Depths, which even in a reprint, it still looks amazing. Following that, Council's Judgment. Now that's just great. Our first foil is a team of Battle Rage, followed by a Lightning Greaves. Now, not a terrible first pack, but I have to say it myself. Dark Depths itself, beautiful card, but Council's Judgment. I think this is the first time it's been reprinted since the first Conspiracy, if I remember rightly. But, let's move on to pack number two. Just quickly skip through these. So, nothing super amazing in the commons. Your own commons. We've got Mistress Factory. Nice. And then to our rare slots, we have Crag Cragenwick Cremator and a Doom Necromancer. Not the greatest, I'm going to be honest. They're. Uh, a bit subpar, in my opinion, but our first row of the pack, uh, foil of the pack, even, is ooh, a foil Urza's Mine. With, when the camera picks it back up again, there we go. Really, really nice art from 7th edition, I believe. And our second foil is a, uh, a Driver of the Dead. Nothing amazing with that one, but might interest somebody in the future. Moving swiftly on. Skip through these. Oh, Baldoving Rage. Not bad. So, on commons, we have Invigorate, Ash Barons. Oh, a thought season of first verse slot. Now, was quite looking forward to getting one of these, not going to lie. And a Maze of Ith as well. Yeah, as a commander player, this stands out for me because it tends to see a lot of play in a lot of decks at the minute. Our first foil is 
Fierce Empath, and followed by Akel Doth, the Forge Master. Now, the Forge Master, a lot of the people I've seen opening have said, why? But, to be honest, I love the card. Artifact players, like me, always love having a card off the Forge Master line around. So, next up. Nothing standing out there, really. Another Oriok Salvagers. And we get two. Riku. Two Reflections. Of two Reflections, even. Another Mythic. Another Commander reprint as well. Going as do like it when sets like this give you some really nice commanders. With a bit of a, just a fresher taste going on. But our next card after that is... A Sword of War and Peace. Now, this is the kind of stuff I've been looking forward to. You can never have enough swords and are always sought after. So, if you open one from any of your packs, don't worry if you don't want them. There'll be someone out there who'll definitely take them off you. Now, foil. Eh, a Kazul's Toll Collector. Hopefully, the next one's better. Nope. Just an idiot charm. Oh, well. You can't win everything, can you? Ooh, knocking the camera there. So, so far, not too bad. That last one was indeed a double mythic pack as well. So, I'm hoping that bodes well for future packs. I really want a mana crit. So, the next pack, just quickly flick through the commons and uncommons. Ooh, Vampire X Mage. Goes with all that dark that's reopened. And then we have an Isochron Scepter. Again, a lot of playing commander at the minute. If you know why, you know why. But moving on, after the Ice Concept, we have an Austere Command. Also a pretty good card. Now, moving on to the foils. Our first foil is a Blood Briar. Eh, definitely could be better. Followed by da -da -da, a Clone Shell. So, nothing spectacular, but the art on that card is just amazing. Especially with the foiling on. That is just a gorgeous card. And our token is a beast. So, that, that, that last pack was a bit of a flop, but can't win everything. So, I hope you're all enjoying this so far. If you are, give us a like and subscribe down below. And let me know what you think. Next pack... Nah, still nothing amazing. Oh, an Urza's Tower. Forgot these are in the common slot in these packs. Not not bad, actually. Uncommons, or a Hinder. Mm. I do like random old cards. And then our first rare of the pack, a Time Sieve. And sneaking out behind it there, a Friction Metamorph. And our foils are a Mere Retriever. Wait, to be honest... I'm going to keep him up himself. I play one in every artifact deck I can. And for behind it is... A Galv Blast. Now, that's going to be great. I'm not sure if it's played in a lot of stuff. But I know someone who might want it. And our token for this one is a cat. So the pace has slowed down a bit on this. You may have noticed. I myself, I've slowed, I have slowed down a bit. Because it's quite warm today. So, moving on, commons, surge node, always fun to have lying around, uh, uncommons, ooh, a pentad prism, always quite like these. And then our first rare of the pack is Spellskite, followed by yeah, a swift blade vindicator. One of those rares where you look at it and you go, why? Why ruin my time with this? But let's see if the foils are any better. First foil is a Sanctum Spirit. Maybe the next one? No, it's a Thraben Inspector. That's not much better at all. Oh, come on, Wizards. I'm losing hope in the set here. I mean, we've still got plenty of packs left to go. Maybe if I open pack on camera, it'll be better. There we go. Next pack. Nothing great yet. So, 
Let's keep going. So we've got a Yabamai's Embrace here. And a Boon Reflection. Now, this is the first card I think we've seen with brand new art. And the reflections this set have some gorgeous artwork. So hopefully we've seen more of these. Then our next rare slot is... Oh, a Cyclonic Rift. Now, really great when it came out in Standard. And it's just a small annoyance in Commander. But always great to have more. So and then our first foil is a Sanctum Gargoyle. In my opinion, not terrible. And that's followed by an Alabaster Mage. That That is quite terrible. So we'll just put this over here. So let's just have a bit of a tidy up, guys, before we uh, start opening more. Because I am very bad at this. If you may have guessed, this is my first time doing my own box opening. And I am still working out what to do. It's, just, it's there. It's done. Cool, there's a pile. Next pack. There's nothing better than opening fresh packs after a long day at work. Like if you agree. So, first one, Ica Wellspring. Not bad. A Bone Picker. We'll skip through the rest of these. There's nothing to do. Oh, there's another, there's another version of mine. And then after the, the Is It Charm here, we have a Phyrexian Revoker. Eh, not, not terrible again. Let's see if the next one's any better. A Duplicant. Okay. So, we, we seem to be getting a fair bit of Phyrexian stuff in this set. I'm not going to complain. Then our foils are... A Sickle Slicer, we get more Phyrexian stuff. Followed by a Metal Spinner's Puzzle. Yeah, I'm just going to put this in the pile here. That's how much I care for those. Right, the Puzzle Knots are good, but you need to have something to make them work. I do not have that pleasure. Next pack. Ooh, a Power Plant. Getting there with the Tron. So we've got a flicker with a crop rotation. Very nice. There we go. First big thing yet. A force of will. Followed by a Bosch. But still. Force of will. With a nice art. Not not the reprint of the original art. That everyone was hoping would never happen. And thankfully it didn't. So there's force of will with a Bosch. And our foils are. A Glaze Fiend. And a Whisper of the Wilds. So we're, we're getting better. We are indeed getting better with these. One can only hope we stay strong. Another sword would be nice. So, next one. An Ancient Stirring. Very nice. Disciple of the Vault. I'm just going to stop there because it is a lovely card to play with. The hinder, and then our first row we have a Twilight Mire followed by a Hammer of Nazan. If you like Commander, you know how annoying this one card can be. Then our first foil is a Cathodian again, another favorite of mine in artifact decks, but probably not for so many others. But our second foil is a Riddlesmith. A lot of artifacts coming up in these packs, so a bit disconcerting, really. But this one, this pack, this guy's going to be in it. I hope. Hopefully, we, we, we'll, we'll start with that. So, nothing there. So, let's see what we have. We have... Ooh, a Mesmeric Orb. This is a welcome return to Pax. I know a lot of the people I know were after this at one point, just for this ability here. When a parent comes untapped, the parent's control and mills a card. Nice to see as well that they've added the new rules text onto these cards as well. Next is a Blade Splicer. Meh, I like the splices, not bad. 
First foil is a Relic Runner, followed by a Welding Jar. Oh, foil welding jar. Not going to complain about that one. But we'll move swiftly on. So, as a draft set, it, it sounds like it's going to be mainly artifacts. So, starting off with another Cathodian. Let's see, what is it with all the artifact theme stuff in this set? So, our final uncommon before the ver, which is a Sen Triplets. Now, this is an amazing card, a really annoying commander, and is now probably the second time I've ever opened one. I've still not built him, so looking forward to this, but the next ver, a Master Transmuter, just as good, really great card. Glad they got another reprint of this. First foil rare, uh, for a card even, the Pyrite Spellbomb, followed by a Chromatic Star. This is definitely just the Artifact Masters for me by the looks of it. But, let's move to the next one. Hopefully the next Artifact we open is a Blightsteel Colossus. That would be amazing. So we have, there's his Tower, Lightning Greaves, oh a Basalt Monolith, nice. First rare is a Thespian Stage, followed by another called off the Forge Master. Yeah. Let's see what the rares give us. So we get a Bone Picker, woo, and a Cathartic Reunion. Yeah. There might be someone who wants them. Not me though, sadly. Up next, quick skip through. No, no, Battle Rage, a Cerus Sphinx, and a Crondius. Oh, a Wound Reflection, another reflection with lovely new art. So, for me, it's not the best art, because I still prefer the original one from Shadow Moor, I think it was. But the card itself is just mm, amazing. The next row is a Scytherix. Woo! Yes! One of the best dragons, in my opinion. And I know there's going to be a few people who are going to be pestering from this when I get out of here. So, let's quickly move on to the foils. We have a Sickle Slicer and a Crib Swap. Yeah, not terrible. Crib Swap does indeed read Eldrazi, though. And you do play with Marathon a lot. So, next pack. Again... Quick flick through. Got a treasure keeper and ugh, an inkwell leviathan is our first row in this pack. <sighs> Let's see what we get next. Oh, a master of Ethereum. Okay. Not as helpful finishing that. But the foils. We have a magnifying glass and ooh, a cold off a flame fiend. I've never actually seen this before. But, you know, I'm sure I can find a use for it somewhere. With a treasure token to finish off the pack. So, so far I'm seeing that the packs are somewhat hit or miss with what you get. But, still some great cards coming out of them. So, this next pack, we'll see if we get any others. Oh, another power plant and an ancient stirrings. So we got another twilight mayor. And, oh no, Hannah, ships navigator with brand new art. Original art in the second print, I think she got was still really nice, but nothing compared to this. The card itself's great, but that artwork I mean, just look at that. That looks oof. And then the foils following Hannah are an apprentice wizard and a defiant salvager. Still, Hannah is going to be fairly sought after a few people I know. Unsurprisingly. Next pack. Looking amazing. And then we got a Buried Ruin. And a Sphinx Summoner. Our first rare is. A Reshape. And followed by an Oblivion Stone. With one of the arts I actually quite like of it. Then our first foil. Is an Ancestral Blade. Followed swiftly by a Glass Dust Hulk. 
So, still not seen any of the uh, really nice Blight Steel Colossus foils. But I'm still feeling it. Still feeling it. So, next pack. Let's see if we get anything blighty in here. Oh, a Dread Return. And our first row in this is a Well of Ideas, followed by another Blade Splicer, first foil, an Ancient Stirrings, and you, a foil Dark Steel Forge. Now, I have not actually seen a Dark Steel Forge in foil in a while. It's like one person I know of has one, and I've wanted one for ages. And now, here it is, with a token afterwards being. And Eldrazi spawn. So that forge, not quite a Blight Steel Colossus, but still, oh, gotta love it. But it's still kind of like Stone Forge Mystic and things like that to come out of the set. So let's see what we get. Nothing overly amazing there. Then we have, oh, a cranial, pra cranial plating reprint. Wasn't quite expecting that, but still quite nice. Our first row of the pack is a Cascade Bluffs, followed by a Wrath of God with, again, the better art. First foil is a Fairy Mechanist and an Eager Construct. Again, just, just call it Artifact Masters, Wizards. Come on. Stop messing with me. And you've even got Greyer and a Worm Coil Engine on the front of the booster packs. May I just call it Artifact Masters. So, this one, we've got another mine. Uh, oh, a Path to Exile. Our first row is a Liege of the Tangle. Again, not one I expected to take a reverse slot in this, but not a terrible card. And that's followed by a Geist of St. Traft. Again, been printed a few times before, but it's a welcome return for some people. First foil, a veteran explorer, followed by an enlarge. Well, we're getting down to the last few packs before we hit that box topper. Get your guesses in now to what that box is going to be. And the words trash aren't appreciated because, for the most part, it's all trash and it's likely going to be that anyway. Next pack. No, not bad. Ooh, a ratchet bomb. Followed by a Bruder Clad. One of the best commanders I've ever played with. But the foils. A clear shot, followed by a buried ruin. Well, not an amazing box so far, but these last two packs could hold my blighty boy. Ooh, an expedition map. Forgot that was in here. And a treasure mage. Woo! Oh, we've got a Mishra's Bauble. Always welcome here. So, first row. A Sunken Ruins. And a Kemba Car Regent. First foil, a Corridor Monitor, followed by a Heartless Pillage. So, guys, we're reaching the end. The last pack has Bray on the front. Will there have anything anywhere near that good inside? I highly doubt it. But let's find out, shall we? We'll suffer together. So, not, again, front, nothing great. Oh, hold the phone. We have an oubliette. I mean, this is, if I'm right, the first time it's ever been reprinted in a modern border. And just look at that artwork. Gruesome, but beautiful. So I'll just put this down with the rest of them. Yeah, what about a hidden stop power to ruin the moment? Our first rare is an Engineered Explosives, followed by a Sculpting Steel. This really is just Artifact Masters. Foils, come on, something good. Cloudy as things, ruin it for me. 
or buy a pain smith. That, no, nah, well, uh, there's a worm token now. Didn't get a worm crown, but let's see. We have here the final pack of the box. The box topper. Anything good going to come out of this? Or am I going to lose it all? Including my marbles, because this was not cheap. But still, for the first video, not been too bad. Let's try and open this up, damaging it. Oh, God. I really do not want to damage this card. There we go. We're in. We're in, guys. So the final card is... Suspense mode. It's definitely a magic card. So, our mystery booster gives us... Earth Thoughtseize! Not entirely terrible, but not what I wanted. But all in all, this box hasn't been the worst. Oh, I forgot there's two box toppers. There's a Blood Moon! I am a happy Larry. So, as I was saying, good pull. Box itself hasn't been terrible, apart from obviously some of the foils have really. Why? But I mean, we've got some half decent stuff. Overall, in my opinion, at the price tag Wizards wants for Double Masters, yes, you get some great cards. But if you're looking for profit, wouldn't recommend it. Even for sitting on some of the cards, you aren't going to make a large amount off. And but if you want it for just some of the reprints in here, like getting ancient stirrings, these new arts and reflections, this foil ancient stirrings, as we're going to say, is very nice. Can't really tell on the camera, but trust me, the foil on some of these cards looks glorious. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Once again, if you like what you see and you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and please comment at the bottom. Let me know what you thought and what I could improve. As I said at the beginning, this is my first video, and I am looking to keep up with it, really. I want to bring up as much content as possible for you all. So, with that, good night.